Hey everybody, Steve Maxwell here. Hey, I want to talk to you a little bit today about uh, Ed Shaughnessy. Ed was a great player. Not necessarily as much of a household name as guys like Buddy Rich, Louis Belson, and the like, but a great player. This is Ed in his early days, and he had some really funky, odd kits. And this is long before he held down the chair in the Tonight Show Orchestra for over 30 years. He was a Slingerland artist at first, and it was hard for Slingerland to get pictures of him with a normal kit. He had these odd-sized drums, small, small bass drums. This is when he started off with Charlie Ventura. Here's some other Slingerland shots from Rob Cook's great Slingerland book. Odd stuff, hard for them to get a real picture that could show a, what was a normal kit at the time. They finally got one with this picture of Ed with a normal five-piece kit, 13, 16, 18. <clears throat> Actually, I think it's 13, 14, 16, and a 22 in snare. When he went to The Tonight Show, he went to Rogers. He had a standard Rogers four-piece kit for a while, and he held down that chair for, as I say, over 30 years. That was the early 60s when he started with them. Here's one of his odd Rogers kits. Again, mismatched size, bass drums. He liked that, and he liked the toms to be different sizes and also smaller on the right than the left. This is when he went to Pearl, shortly after the, right after the Rogers gig. He went on to Pearl. Again, two different size bass drums, uh, you know, a lot of rack toms, floor toms. And he eventually migrated <clears throat> away from Pearl, even though he was a Pearl artist for several years. Uh, he was a Pearl artist during the time when there were some great people playing Pearl drums. If you look and see it here, you had basically Louis Belson, you had Shaughnessy, you had Shelly Mann, Art Blakey, Jack Sperling, all playing pearl drums during that period of time. They made some great stuff. But then he moved to Ludwig. And here's Ed with the signature Ludwig kit that he used to have. Again, two different size bass drums. Uh, the smaller tom on the right instead of the left. <clears throat> and Ed liked the way those set up musically. That's why he preferred that. Here's uh, Ed playing at the Rob Cook Chicago Drum Show several years ago. That's actually where I, I met Ed. And then here's a shot from the infamous YouTube video for Buddy Rich and Ed Shaughnessy doing a drum battle on The Tonight Show. And that is a video you definitely need to check out on YouTube. That's incredible. Now here's a kit that uh, we had. This is back in 2004. It's one of Ed's kits. I don't know if it's that exact kit that you're seeing right there, but uh, Ed had a few kits like that in the same configuration and, and the like. This was fully complete. The snare drum, as you see it, the stick bag, his sticks, brushes, mallets, all the stands, all the hardware, all the pedals. It was a great kit. It was a fun kit to play once you got used to how Ed set it up with the different sizes and the different uh, the drums in the different places. It was it was cool to, pl uh, to play on. And that went to a good collector friend of ours uh, a long time ago. So uh, this, this little framed picture also came with it. So what I wanted to do today was give you a chance to get a little exposure to someone who you may not have known much about as a household word, but if you watch The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, for 35, almost 35 years it was, Ed held down that seat. And that was the, uh, the primo uh, TV seat for, mus for a musician anywhere, for a drummer anywhere. So uh, Ed was a great guy, sweet guy. You ought to check out those videos, like I said, especially that YouTube video uh, for The Tonight Show with the drum battle with Buddy. Thanks, everybody. Take care.